right, guys, we're doing episode, I think, three, stand-up part two, Rashad Chaudhary. I got Anthony Salgado with me. Take them closer, Bradley. Oh, we got Bradley Goodwin on the camera. Get them up, he's up. Why are you disturbing us, Chris? Mm-hmm. All right, so he got upright posture still, like from the first video. And that's what they do in case they want to deal with, like, uh, guillotines, because you have low posture and guillotines. It's not recording, right, Bradley? Just give a thumbs up. All right, so we're still doing the outside clinch. So we're going to do a post and then head and sternum. You can do a double leg, and there's two finishes in that leg. You can smash, or you can do a front roll. So he's got upright front. He's going to pose. He's going to knock him out down for a bit. Head and sternum. So drop. What's your turn to say? My preference is to get low so you can pick him up a little bit and drive forward. You good? I win him a little bit. All right. So when you're coming down, you have two finishes with that momentum. You can keep the pressure on his shoulder. On your head, I mean. And then come over. And that's just a smash pass. Or you can do a front roll. The front roll I like, especially if they're trying to go for a guillotine. So let's say you're going for a guillotine. The front roll is a good way to deal with the guillotine because it's kind of hard to finish. So they're trying to guillotine you. Right, how do I? <laughs> My cameraman locked us out. <laughs> Alright, so we couldn't finish the double leg. You should think of that head in the sternum as a post. So I'm posting to knock him off balance. So if I post and then I couldn't get it, you should still headbutt him real good. Because it's going to knock him off balance and then you just shoot to whatever side you want. If I'm penetrating with my right leg, then I'm probably going to go to my left next. So it's going to go boom. That's what I do originally. That's what I do originally. Penetrate to my left and then I'm going to ankle bundle. Ankle bundle just when you grab both ankles. And after that, you can do the exact same finish. I can smash. You can do a front roll, but I think I'm going to do a front roll. Bro. It's just 3825. You're going to have to change it later because now it's on the. That's alright. Is it 3025? 3825. <laughs> alright, so let's say you want an inside clinch. Let's say we're doing uh, double collars or a Muay Thai plum. So I'm gonna go for some foot sweeps. Basically, you just move him around and try and kick out his leg. I like to kick with my right leg to this leg. That's my preference. So when you want to come in, you're gonna come in real hard because it sets up. Uh, it's, it's gonna help set him off balance for whatever he wants. So I come in hard with my double punch. If he pushes back into me, right? I'm gonna try and redirect that push towards this foot, and I'm gonna try and kick it out. But come back again. And he wasn't pushing that much into me in that situation. So boom, push into me. And then if not, it's going to set up something. Like the sweep, you can get it. It's nice when you get it. It's going to look really flashy. But if you don't, in that case, go behind. But a lot of times, when you knock forward with the uh, plump, and they're not pushing into because you cut them off balance, you can just go straight into that head of the surface and go pop them up, boom. That's why I didn't want to land in a smash or in a front roll to so grab my ankles. But of course you'd want to land with those smash or the front roll. Alright, so let's say you got a single underhook. And both both of those uh, inside clinches are what I like to do against smaller people who try and run away from you. So like here's my theory on inside and outside clinching. You want the inside clinch whenever you can get it. A lot of people, they're going to break away. So break, uh, get double hands inside my elbows. And push it off. Boom, and you just broke it off. And that's usually what someone smaller is going to do to you because they like to grapple from the outside. Good night. So these kind of grips are nice on holding him if you're a bigger guy. So another one that I like for inside clinch and holding people down. If I'm going for underhook, this is nice, but I don't want them to try and run away. So trying to limp on your mouth. Come on, come on. Just, oh. you, you, I'm 
So if you're going against a smaller guy, they don't want to engage with you in the clinch. So one thing that I like, like for example, if I go over single collars, you bump my arm off from under the elbow. So single collars has a little annoying. Good night, Mo. It's a little annoying if they bump you off. Same thing with the single underhook. So if I get a single underhook, just like before when I had a collar try, I try and reinforce it with another collar try. If I get an underhook, I like to reinforce it like this. If I have what I call a clamp down underhook, it's going to cause someone to bump it off, so I'm going to be pushing the shoulder down. And same thing, I'm going to tip it this way and tip. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Come to show me. Like and subscribe. Thank you, Chris. Oh. My camera got an iPhone. I don't got an iPhone, so I'm a little dumb. I don't get off of the screen. And just put it in the password. All right, so we're going back to the clamp down underhook. So that was the trip. You can also force him to do a front roll to get top north south, or if he blocks. So the way the way it works to get the front roll. So if I if I got that clamp down underhook, I'm gonna try and jump him over, and in class I'm gonna try and make a new front roll. So front roll with me, boom. But realistically, I don't try and make them front roll like maybe in competition or maybe someone who I know has good reactions. I'm going to try and spike him. And in the last video I talked about how the legality of spiking. Spiking is illegal if he has no way to prevent his head from hitting the mat, which is what spiking is. So by trying to drive his head to not go slow, boom, that's a spike. But not really, because he has a hand, he has a way to defend it. So the two ways he's going to try and defend it, before I intentionally front rolled him, to be nice, you know, we're drilling, we're friends, classmates, but if you want to be aggressive, go straight for the spike. Hopefully he's smart, gets good reactions. He's going to be the one to front roll. If anything, you don't want him to front roll. You're trying to spike him. He's going to front roll to protect himself. So I'm going to try and spike him. You're trying to front roll. <clears throat> so it's a little subtle difference. The first one, I rolled him over on purpose. The second one, I'm actually trying to spike him. He's rolling over on his own accord because he don't want to get spiked. And again, be careful in class. If you're trying to spike someone in class and you can tell they're not defending well, so let's not try and spike you and you actually let me. I'm probably just going to let go and make sure there's no power in that because I don't want to spike so much in class. The other option is he's going to post his hand to the mat. So if we post his hand to the mat, in that moment, just clamp, and you got the pinky elbow from last video, or actually that was a top turtle video. Because he was in top, he was in bottom turtle for a moment. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's next on my notes. I don't got to check. Other one is ankle snatch, or ankle pick. So you bump him over, and he doesn't post because he's strong. So, like this case, I wasn't even able to get him down that much. I went down down like this much. Because he didn't go down, I'm going to be the one to drop. Or actually, I would have dropped anyways. Boom. And <clears throat> that's the third sequence. So it just depends on how they react. So I'm going to try and spike him. Probably off of a front trip or a side trip on that leg. And he's either going to roll or he's going to... He's gonna roll, he's gonna plant his hand on the mat, in which case you do pinky elbow, or I also heard that's called a corkscrew. Or he's not even gonna really move much, he's gonna go like this, in which case you drop and pull the opposite side leg. Grab the far ankle, it stays upright. Oh, so we just trip the near leg, you can also trip the far leg if he stays upright. So I said, boom, you can trip this leg, that's the near leg. But if you want to really commit, you can go and trip the outside leg. And go back. So some people get the idea of the landing. This is going to be a lot of scrambles, because if you notice, a lot of these times I'm landing in like a weird position. So you got to be ready to smash, boom, to cartwheel, boom, got Kimura, scissor leg choke, whatever. Of course, if you don't scramble, you probably end up in his closed guard, but why do you want to end up in his closed guard? Follow up your takedown with a scramble pass. Alright, so if you can get double unders instead of a single under with a, a with a clamp down. So if I got this coming under boom, I do prefer to tip to as well. I guess it depends. If he's not really fighting into me, he's kinda of, kinda of run away from me. I'm going to trip and go forward, and 
then if you don't want to land a butterfly guard, be ready to cartwheel pass or something, use that momentum. But most people don't get tripped over like that. They're going to bump back into you. So if you bump back into me, I'm going to lateral drop, draw my left shoulder to the mat, and just spin over. And I was being a little nice because, you know, I don't want to get too much in drilling, but try to pick them up and then drop over. And you want to land as high control as possible. So it's going to put a lot of pressure on him. I did it once. Landed a little harder on him than I intended to. All right. So now, oh, we got a deep overhook. And then after that, we're going to do low posture, like if they're wrestlers. Okay. So if you got an overhook, what I like to do, is especially if you're standing upright, boom. And I, guess I like to get it deep. What I mean by that is just like before, I'm going to try and clamp down on it, like even get a rear naked choke grip on it. And I'm just going to drop onto this side. Boom. And I'm going to lay on this arm. Try and get on top of me, Anthony. It's hard for him because I'm laying on his arm. And I'm going to keep the pressure on his arm as I'm working my way out. So as long as you stay heavy on that arm, it's going to be really hard for him to collect guard or anything like that. But now, now we're really on the second sequence, which is a lot of, a lot of people are going to give you that wrestling stance instead of that more judo style upright stance. So we're going to do the more classic wrestling style takedowns. All right, so you go to low posture, Anthony. So of course, just like before, you're gonna snap him down and start going for a choke. And I said earlier, all that top throw stuff works from this kind of situation. But if possible, you still don't want him up. So a nice way to make sure he's gonna be down when he's um, playing this kind of posture. I give you more like leg split. Yeah, more wrestling style. Once you get your collar time, especially you're gonna try and bump him over. If he's weak when you initiate your collar tie, He's actually gonna move, which creates a little pocket for me to get my second hand, push this, and now at the back. And um, you can start working the back body lock from last time. But most people are not like that, they're not that weak. So you get this, he's gonna push back this way a little bit, and when he does, I'm gonna grab the other arm, I'm gonna use that energy to do kind of like a takedown from the last time, where if I have the back body lock and I'm on this side, I'm gonna jump that way in a circular motion and pull him into my lap. This time I'm gonna jump this way and end up in a front headlock. So I'm gonna go boom and end up in a front headlock. So I go bam, he pushes back, boom. Now I got top turtle. Pretty sure I remember the sequence, but let me make sure I do it in order. So that's if you actually get the uh, front headlock and you can work all the top turtle submissions from there or get the go behind. In that case, I kind of went to a go behind from the go go because I had more momentum. All right, so let's say I went for that circular drop and I drop, but he doesn't really come down for me to get that front end lock. So I go like, boom, and now I'm down here. Come to the side now, Bradley. So if we end up in this situation, I wasn't, I wasn't able to bring him low enough because um, he was a little strong. Ideally, I want to get this uh, ankle because that's the one that uh, I brought towards me. So I'm still keeping his head low. I'm going to reach and then pull and push. And then you can finish it just like the ankle snatch, like front roll, smash, which was uh, episode two. Oh, next, next, if you can't reach the ankle, you can reach the knee instead. All right, so let's say we're skipping all those uh, steps and I wasn't able to reach his ankle. Move a little further back. Yeah, boom. So I'm not able to reach the ankle. And I'm gonna try and reach his knee. And in this case, since it's this, um, knee that's close, bam. And I can grab with my hand, and that's fine. But when you think about shooting for this um, knee, instead of trying to think of shooting with your hand, 
even try and shoot with your elbow. The benefit of shooting with your elbow is if he steps his back, it's really easy to miss. Now come back, if I shoot with my elbow, try and step it back, it's a lot harder to miss because I'm probably gonna catch here, 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 here. I have much more range before it misses. And if you have like bad eyesight, which I do, it's easier to get, easier to get this. You're also more committed. And even better than this, try and get your upper arm. So if I go here, boom, I'm catching him with my bicep. So if I drop, boom, and I come in, I'm gonna get my head up into his rib cage on this side, but on the other side, I'm gonna pick him up like this, and I'm gonna start circling. And it's like a, it's like a smash. I actually got that in my January comp, if you look it up, on a 170 pounder, I was 155 in that match. And I actually learned something that day, which is one of the tips I wanna talk about for MMA. So if you go for that takedown, and I like to put my head in the rib because it makes it hard for me to get a guillotine. So boom, boom. A lot of people when they start it, they'll just run for it. And in, um, like a jiu-jitsu match, if you just run for it, it's not gonna help you because you're just gonna take them out of balance. Did all that clinch work, you almost got a takedown only to have the ref be like, hey, you can't take them out of balance. In an MMA match, yeah, drive straight forward, run them into the wall. And there was a wall. Before I could take him down, boom, I had him against the cage. But in like a jiu-jitsu match, if you just go straight forward, he might just keep running all the way till you're out of bounds, you don't get a takedown. So run in a circular motion. That's also what I was telling my cameraman, Bradley. When you go for your takedown, don't go straight on them. Unless there's a cage, which we don't got a cage. All right, so now, so all this, if you notice, is just a series of attempted takedowns. So you go for one thing, um, go behind, doesn't work. Go for the front headlock, doesn't work. Go for the ankle snatch. Go for what I call like a modified double leg when you grab the knee. Now we're gonna go for a proper um, double leg. So if I drop, boom, and I can't reach this, for whatever reason, I'm gonna use my ankle to throw him to the side a little bit. Now that I have him to the side, now I'm gonna go for a proper double leg. So I'm gonna grab both knees. You could go for an ankle bundle, which we showed earlier, but for now, we wanna be more committed because he's closer to me. So if he's closer to me, you're gonna drive your head up so that you can't get to him. Boom, smash, that's it. So that's how I like to set up the double. I know a lot of people like to go straight into doubles in jiu-jitsu and there's a lot of different takes on how to go for it because you don't want to get guillotined. I'm only going to go for a double if I have a really nice angle and it's also a series of attempted takedowns. But let's say he sprawls, which is a common reaction to the double. He could have gone for a guillotine, but it's going to be really hard for both the modified double. Can you go for a guillotine? Because <laughs> my head is in his ribs. Now if I go for the proper double, Boom, I push it to the side. It's almost like I have a body lock because of how far behind I am. It's gonna be impossible to get that guillotine. Not to say I never got guillotine before. I had to get a guillotine a few times to learn when you can go for doubles and when you should not be going for doubles. So let's say he would go for guillotine, but in this case he can't really because of the way I'm setting it up. So instead he tries to sprawl. So if he tries to sprawl, just do a drop step. So the second penetration step goes over and shoot your head up. And now you're behind him. And then you can start working top turtle. And a lot of times when they go when you go for a duck step, instead of just sprawling and you're behind them, they're gonna try and circle with you. Because they know you're trying to get behind, so they're gonna try and circle. So if I go for that duck step and he tries to circle, boom, right here. This is the perfect moment where I would go for the angle snatch. So drop my head low to the ground and drive. And then of course if you got the duck step, you got the if he's able to stay standing up, you got the back body lock from the previous video. Double again, or body lock. Yep, that's it. So if you learned something, please give me a like. Stay tuned for next video. It should be open guard. Thank you.